welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Vintage. And this list comes from Patreon subscriber John. This is his take on Atraxa Oath. I am still searching for the deck that I'm going to play for the NYSE Open, which will have occurred several weeks ago by the time you're watching this video. And this is the third installment of my NYSE testing. So I hope you've all been enjoying the vintage across various decks. If you've been following the series, basically the jumping off point was I am worried about Oath performing in this metagame. I'm going to try other decks. And the other decks I've tried have been losing to shit that Oath just crushes, like Collector Oofs and Mono White Initiative and just random Hate Bears, uh, Stony Silence folding to that, just uh, Dress Down, you know, like cards that Oath just doesn't care about and smushes. My concern with Oath is that Jewel Shops is a lot better after Modern Horizons 3. They've learned how to build their deck correctly. And that was one of Oath's worst matchups before the deck got better. But I'm wondering if I overreacted to that information because that was already one of Oath's bad matchups. And if I'm doing stuff like main decking Null Rod already out of respect for that matchup, am I that worried about a bad matchup getting slightly worse? Do I think that the meta share of that bad matchup is going to go up so much that it's going to change my tournament trajectory? Do I not think that the metagame will correct for Jewel Shops at all? And if I end up playing against a deck, bunch of like Hate Bear decks with a bunch of Collector Oofs, play against Bug, play against a bunch of Vexing Bobble decks, I would rather be Oath into those decks. I'd rather be Oath into anyone who's overcorrecting for Jewel Shops. And we're kind of back at zero. Took the scenic route to get back to, let's just try Oath as the answer. And maybe I won't like this. Maybe I need to tune it a little more. There are flex slots in both the main deck and sideboard that I can still play with, but main deck Null Rod, two main deck Thoughtseize, kind of stacked up most of the flex slots here versus combo. And I still just love my matchup versus anyone who's playing a creature. In my last two leagues, I've paired into zero opponents who had Luris as their companion compared to the four or five per league I was getting before this week, basically. And that's really interesting as well. If that means Luris Saga is losing meta share to make room for like all breachers and shit, I think I'm okay with that as an oath deck. I don't know. I'm just back to square one, took a journey of discovery, and learned that my hometown was already pretty cool. And then I moved back there. I'm just going to try Oath again in a league. Let's get into it. This is John's Atraxa Oath. I guess I should describe the deck really quickly. I just assume everybody is uh, as invested in me in this event at this point. But yeah, Oath of Druids. If your opponent has more creatures than you, you flip cards till you hit a creature, put it into play. Atraxa is the only creature. Atraxa refills your hand. Show and Tell also puts Atraxa into play. Tinker can get Bolas to Citadel, which eventually puts the tracks into play. Out of the sideboard, Tinker can get Sphinx of the Steelwind as well. And we're just kind of a control deck full of uh, Okos and forces and stuff and card selection until one of those things happens. That's the, the long and short of Oath. I've played a lot of Oath on the channel. Go check it out if you want to see more of this. Now let's go play this league. I am on the play versus someone whose username is Restrict Hollow One. We'll see if they actually believe that. I'm going to keep this hand, actually. It's kind of low impact, but this is the type of hand where I could just cast an Oath, and if they counter it, then I could cast another Oath. Just use Oath as Thoughtseize. Like, if this was Thoughtseize instead of Oath, I would definitely keep it. And obviously, that's not a one-to-one -one comparison. Because Thoughtseize does other things than help resolve your important spells. But if they are a blue creature deck and they use energy on the first Oath, I'm going to get them real good. They've got a Wasteland for me. I thought about playing around Wasteland, but I have two green sources here. It's mostly fine. Probably will lead on the Strip Mine next turn, though. Vexing Bobble. 
I guess I misstep that, because misstep won't be good after this. And I do have Moxon in my deck, and they are good draws right now. Like so. Alright, I'm going to stick an Oath of Druids, and see what they got over there. Wasting me off blue sucks, because now I can't follow up with Oko, Elk, their Mana Crypt, and then they have a creature. But now they're in a spot where they can't really play a creature. Oh, is this some Nadu deck? Trinisphere, okay. I mean, I'm fine versus Trinisphere. Come on, blue source off the top, win the game. Not a blue source, a blue land, or a, a blue card. I can now force a will something if I want to pitch Oko. I'm not trying to strip mine them out from under their own Trinisphere with the Mana Crypt still on. Ancient Tomb. Oh god, we're some Eldrazi deck. Oh no. Exile, target, enchantment, and this is on cast. All right, well, you've exiled my oath. I do have another one. I want them to have the creature because I'm just coming back with the other oath now. All right, let's see if they can solve this problem twice with their Eldrazi deck. Yeah, I guess you have a Mayakos wouldn't be in a Nadu deck that you would just play Tropical Island. Yeah, and then they just scoop. So here we are, already just shit clowning some deck that would have probably beat some clever artifact combo deck with their Vexing Bobble into Trinosphere start. And instead, I just cast Oath of Druids twice and they died. Sweet. Okay, we're playing against some sort of Eldrazi prison deck. I think Force of Negation, Flusterstorm will be bad here. I probably don't need or want to get Taxi and probe them. Mental Missteps interesting because we've seen Vexing Bobble, which is a card I kind of care about. I would like as many Okos as I can get. Sarah's Emissary, Portal to Phyrexia, Sphinx of the Steelwind. I don't want Null Rod versus this deck. I could see Force of Vigor or Abrupt Decay being useful. But their creatures aren't actually artifacts, they're just colorless. Sensei's top can be a little slow in matchups like this. Though I think the mental misstep is the, the place to cut. And then I just need to kind of rely on the inevitability of my deck. Four oaths, four show and tells. I now have four extra things to put in. I have an Oko I can cast. Let's do it. Okay, keep. I have Orchard Oath, and I have show and tell Atraxa. Mox Pearl. They have a Trinosphere again. Gross. All right, well, luckily that does not impact my game plan at all. It does make Wasteland better, because I'm going to have to run a land out here at some point that can get wasted. This card's still restricted, right? Just checking. And Wasteland confirmed. We're dead. Thought Not Seer. All right, have a peek. Oath and Show and Tell are reasonable choices here. My best draw in my deck is a fetch land. If I can just play out a land that can't get wasted, then I just send it next turn. We took the oath. Okay. Come on, fetch land. Thought sees bummer. All right, I'll play Forbidden Orchard. If they're going to waste one of my lands, I want it to be that one, because they just took my oath anyway. Yep, there's the waste. I'm not going to give them a creature on the way out. A glaring Flesh Raker. Whenever... They cast a colorless spell, they make a 0-1. Whenever a colorless creature comes into play, I take one damage. Come on, land. Okay. I mean, we're still just... They have two cards left in their hand, plus their draw step. It has to be a hate piece or a wasteland. Or else I'm just putting a tracks into play. Sewing Myco spawn. This kills one of my lands, doesn't it? Oh, only if you kick it. Yeah, they get to tutor a land. So they might have Caracas in their deck. That's really good. Oh, Wasteland. Yeah, we knew about that one already. Sure, that works too. Okay, uh, this game brought to you by Trinosphere, and then they just have some other shit in their deck. Most Vintage decks lose to a turn one Trinosphere. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I am just dead. I did keep drawing lands, though. I mean, considering I cast zero spells that game, that was weirdly close. I am now on the play. Do I think any of my other interaction is better than Thoughtseize? Like, Abrupt Decay, maybe? I don't think so. Just send it again. Same squad. <laughs> uh, well, I can cast two Oath of Druids on turn one, and then just hope that my life holds out forever. Interesting. Because if they have something like Containment Priest, this hand is shit. I really wish the Citadel wasn't in my hand, because now Tinker's bad. And they have not shown me the ability to win without a creature, so I'm gonna just cast two Oath of Druids here. And hope they hold. Play Beseju, play Black Lotus. Sack for green, play an Oath. And bonus Oath. Pass the turn. 
I need to draw a Forbidden Orchard before they remove two Oath of Druids. Forbidden Orchard. Forbidden Orchard. Sarah's Emissary. All right. Running out of Oath Bullets. It's monster flooding. Wasteland. I don't even care about that. That is not what this game is about. Orchard. Orchard. Another Oath. Strip Mine. Okay. Also doesn't matter. Okay, show and tell. Now if I find mana at any point in the game, I can shove these things into play. My Lotus is already spent, though. That would have been the, the one to use. We're really just stress testing how capable this deck is of not playing a creature and still winning. Oh, there it is. Now they're suddenly under the gun. I'm going to give them a creature, and they can either kill it or face my horrible wrath. Okay, they are... The state joining me in the end step, which gets me a land. I am happy for that. I know they can strip mine it, but that is a, a strip mine used. Okay, do they have another Basaju? Mox Pearl, I hate that. Oh no, they have so much mana. All right, what are we doing now? I hope they don't have that exile idiot. Fudge! All right, well, if I draw a mana, I have another oath here. We're just slightly behind. Now, just any mana, a mox, a land, anything does it. Cool. All right, can you beat the third one? Oath of Druids. Moment of truth. Someone's in trouble here. If they use Besaju, I just pivot on to show and tell. If they have another one of these Eldrazi, that's really good, but my next mana cast show and tell also. All right, yeah, they're just thought nodding me. This probably takes the show and tell just in case, because the tracks is likely to hit a land. And then I have two monsters in play. I could hit Sarah Emissary or Sphinx off of this Oath. Atrax is still the most likely hit. But here we go. All right. I would like to use this ability, yes. Hit Sphinx. Lost my Time Walk. Another Oath. I can Oath multiple times. Yeah, I'm going to give them another creature here and play another Oath. I don't want them to draw Besaju and then I'm behind. I do still have four hittable monsters in the deck. Another Thought Not Seer, sure. This one's going to take Tinker. Though it doesn't have to because I have no Tinker bullets left in the deck. Yeah, they took the Emissary, that's fine. Okay, here we go. I can even Oath twice here if the first one doesn't hit a Traxa. And I can Oath twice either way. All right, name Creature for this and then get a Traxa. Yeah, I'm just going. Sick. All right, you want to keep playing? We've got, yeah, okay, sick. Okay, opponent had basically everything they could want that game they did everything they were supposed to do i did not play a spell between turns what two and five and we still won pretty easily this is what i'm talking about about the structural favor of oath of druids versus any deck with creatures in it like, i think if i'm some combo deck i just lose this match i don't know like spell based combo deck obviously oath is also kind of a combo deck but okay that felt really good vindicating on to the next round Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic. I'm on the draw in round two with a peak and a turn one oath and a turn two oath. I'm going to keep this. There are decks like any sort of turbo combo deck where my hand is non-interactive and terrible. A bizarre deck might overrun me, but I mean, I'm doing the thing here. Once again, no Luris. A record 12 matches in a row recorded without Luris as fr from my opponent. Opponent's on 5. Are you a bizarre deck or are you just a mall to 5? Not a bizarre deck. Might be initiative. Vexing Bobble. That does make my Mox Ruby and my Gadaxian Probe worse. What a stupid card. If I draw a blue land, I can still cast Gadaxian Probe and then Oath on the following turn. Crucible of Worlds. Okay, so they are down to one card in hand. If it happens to be Strip Mine, I'm in trouble. Okay, uh, don't show me strip mine. Wasteland, son of a biscuit. We're so fucked. All right, well, suddenly, dead to Vexing Bobble. I win this game easily on the play. Is that what we're doing now? Vintage, just 
distill everything down to play draw. Oh, strip mine's interesting. If I play strip mine, I wonder if they waste it. And if they don't waste it, they lose. So, I mean, they should probably waste it. But I can at least make it weird for them. I guess fetch land is the best draw in my deck, because that puts Oath into play. Uh, obviously, wasting I'll strip your ancient tomb in response. Okay, so drawing a fetch land is what I want to do here. Sick. All right, we're way ahead now. There's a saga. That I do not care about. I think in the end step, I'm going to Mystical Tutor for Time Walk and just have that in my hand. I can't Force of Will anyway. I'll get this Underground Sea, Mystical, get Time Walk. Where are you? There you are. And just make sure my Atraxa wins when it arrives. Okay, Oath of Druids in play. Moment of Truth. Can you get out of this? Lost the Crypt Flip. That means two Atraxa hits put them to one instead of four. Wasteland. Yeah, they don't know that I have another land for the time walk yet. I take one here, and then here comes Atraxa. Milled both my Okos. Sad to see those go, but okay. Besaju who endures. I want that as my land. Thoughtseize? Probably not. This Mox Jet can be my artifact. Force of... or Vamp Tutor is a better instant than Force of Will. I still get a Sorcery. Would I rather Thoughtseize or Mox Jet? Or not... or Tinker. Thoughtseize or Tinker. I'm not going to take the Atraxa. Oh, I have a Show and Tell in my hand. Maybe I will take the Atraxa. Alright, I will take the Atraxa. And I will take the Thoughtseize. Though so Tinker setting up Citadel. I didn't mill my Citadel. Okay, they're just tired of waiting for me to make these decisions. And look at this. Again, another example of Maxine Bobble on the play. Shut off my turn one oath. Crucible Wasteland locks out my turn two oath. I still win easily on turn five just because of the structural build of oath compared to these decks. All right, all right. Looks like another prison shops kind of thing. Yeah, Force of Vigor is super awkward, considering that the card I want to remove, it doesn't remove. Though it does hit a bunch of other stuff in their deck, probably still should bring it in. An Abrupt Decay and Cut Down. I'm not going to bring in Cut Downs. Abrupt Decay is a maybe, but I don't think I'm going to have room. Okay, I'm actually cutting Bolas to Citadel versus the deck with Vexing Bauble in it. I can Tinker for Sphinx if I need to do that. The Probe, Misstep, Flusterstorm all come out. I think Thoughtseize can come out against this deck, too. There's one more cut, the Null Rod. Null Rod's out. Do I want to make room for Abrupt Decay? Do I want to make room for another Force of Negation? These are all definitely in. I think I'm happy with the rest of the construction of this deck. Do I want Portal of Phyrexia in? Last round, I was against a known creature deck, the Eldrazi pile. This round, we just saw a bunch of prison shit. I think I want Abrupt Decay in. Tinker only gets Sphinx in this universe, but I think I'm okay with that. Yep, here I go. Well, uh, no blue source. I have Force Blue card and Force Green card, and then I can fire an Ancestral when the dust settles, assuming I get to play the game at all. <laughs> the Vexing Bobble made my whole hand is off. I'm going to mulligan this. All right, rewarded. My hand's pretty great. I will keep this and put... I think strip mine to the bottom. Or I could hedge and bottom the ruby. If they're on traditional shit, like Sphere of Resistance, I want the ruby. If they're on Vexing Bobble, I don't want the ruby. Okay, I'm getting rid of the ruby. I can still turn one Oko with this Black Lotus. They multi five versus Saga. Vexing Bobble. Yep. This is a good spot for strip mine. A terrible spot for Force of Will. Strip mine the saga. Inventor's fair. Okay. I'm going to play the trop. I want to hide the orchard because that could be more useful. Like the high roll on orchard is higher than the high roll on trop. Okay, now I can cast brainstorm. Card that I wish I had more recently than this turn. Now we're in the danger zone where if I give them a 1 1 and can't leverage it, they suddenly have a clock where they didn't have a clock before. But I'm very likely to cast this brainstorm. Yikes. All right, well, they don't have a land drop now. So I guess I end step brainstorm, hope to draw oath, and fingers crossed. Okay, float a blue, brainstorm, found an oath. 
Magic is easy. Put back Atraxa and Oko. And then I draw Oko. And then next turn, I put that Atraxa into play from the top of my deck. Okay. Moment of truth. Can those last two cards in their hand beat Atraxa? Because she's here. Nope, they cannot. Once again, opponent did everything they wanted to do. Turn one bobble, cut off most of my hand, and then they just died. I'm feeling it, folks. Feeling the oath. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play with a hand that has a bunch of A's and a bunch of B's. Or a bunch of B's, no A's, depending on how we want to talk about that. I have Show and Tell, no Monster, Forbidden Orchard, no Oath. I have Null Rod, not sure if it's good in the matchup. I am going to keep this, though. Mystical for Ancestral is still a, a good play, where I come from. Chancellor of the Annex. Okay, so this is going to be Mono White Initiative. And my hand is pretty good versus Chancellor. I'm going to get a Tropical Island. And then play out my Mox, pay the one, play out Black Lotus, pass. Though I could also sack Black Lotus to cast Null Rod and Mystical Tutor, because Chancellor is a deck that relies on artifact mana in a lot of its starts. Interesting. All right. Tropical Island, Mox Ruby. If I'm going to play Null Rod, do I even pay for this one? Does it matter if I don't? I could hold back the Mystical Tutor if I don't pay the one. Yeah, this is actually just became really interesting. Does Mox Ruby in play do anything? Is there anything I would pivot onto other than Mystical Tutor? Or other than Ancestral for Mystical Tutor? I don't think so. The other alternative is like Mystical for DT and try to DT for Oath next turn and skip the whole Null Rod business. I think I'm just going to pay the one though and go with my original plan. Lotus, Sack for Blue. Might as well tap this. Null Rod. Perfectly normal. Legacy start, or vintage start here. The old multiple mana rocks into Null Rod play. Mystical for Ancestral. And then I will pass. And hope that their hand is full of artifacts. A Wasteland would be kind of annoying, because then I'd have to start feeding them creatures to Ancestral, but I'm still comfortable doing it. This Chancellor is hard to filter into anything else if you don't have Chromox online. There might be some outside chance that there are like some turn one win hyper fast combo deck that plays Chancellor in... I, mean, I assume it's initiative, but I'm just thinking about all decks in history that might play Chancellor the Annex. And if there's something like that, the Null Rod probably just ended the game. Okay, they just played a tap land, and it'll be my turn with an Ancestral Recall. Let's see where we can go with this. Ancestral myself before my land drop. I found an underground sea and a mox jet that doesn't work. I do play brainstorm. Probably don't want this thing in play. That was a bit of a whiff. Though if they ever answer my null rod to turn on their own hand, I would prefer this to be in play. Okay, we'll see if I can follow up here. I am way ahead and I believe the null rod is locking out some number of cards in their hand. Just trying to draw an Atraxa or an Oath before it's too late. Wasteland, I don't care about that. And they correctly identified that that's true. Another show and tell, bummer. Okay, who can do literally anything before it's too late here? Okay, the Witch Enchanter played as a land, and they did zap it in, so it's creature time. Anointed Peacekeeper, and this can name show and tell pretty cleanly here. If I had gotten Demonic Tutor instead of Ancestral, is this game better off for me? Ooh, okay. Um, I can turn off my own Null Rod now. Or I could just Elk one of the, the Frozen Moxen. That was a good draw. Elk this Mox Ruby. Doesn't work anyway. And now I can turn off Null Rod if I need my artifact mana. Okay. Passing the turn. Not attacking here. 
drew an action spell probably slightly later than I would have liked, but it's here. I will trade if Peacekeeper attacks, because that unlocks my show and tells, and I prefer to keep the board clear when I'm the control deck trying to survive an aggro deck. Loran can kill Mox Jet or Null Rod here. Okay, going for the Null Rod. See how many artifacts they've been sandbagging. Chancellor's under Chrome Mox now. And can I draw something good? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, uh, I'm going to Elk my Mox Jet and then pass the turn. Another Chrome Mox. Mox Ruby. Mox Emerald. The Null Rod was doing a lot. My read on that was correct. Unfortunately, my Ancestral Recall didn't deliver. And the third chance of the Annex, which will quickly become an Elk. All right, I mean, their hand's pretty bad. At least have that going for me. Elk this Chancellor. And now I have a Force of Will, so I can interact with their next thing. Each player draws a card. Hell yeah. Feed me. Feed me. I love cards. Chancellor probably attacks here by itself. It is attacking Oko. So is Lauren and Spirit Token. Okay, I'll block Lauren. Just trade off with this kind of useful thing when Oko can go to four loyalty and still be huge and in charge. Oh, that's a cool trick. I'm going to force some negation that. Force some negation probably not getting much better versus initiative. I have to feed them a creature, but that one one probably not a huge game breaker. At least I hope. All right, they tap Lauren on the way out. Fed me Bolas to Citadel. Now show and tell can do stuff. Okay, moment of truth. Can I turn this game around now? Can I just win right now? Bolas to Citadel with force backup versus an opponent with two cards in hand. White Plume Adventurer. Okay. Do I risk letting them have the initiative? What is the risk of them having the initiative? They have like a bigger creature next turn. I don't think I care about this. I'm just worried about the last card in their hand being like. Null rod or some shit. It's probably not, but why take a risk? All right, they are wasting my underground Z. They just tutored a planes. Oh, oh no! What a trick! What a dirty trick! Now I need to draw land. They had two wastelands, or they had a wasteland sandbagged in hand. That's actually devastating. I need a land now. Any mana source. Oh god. Thank you, Lotus Petal. I needed you. All right. Well, that was dangerous. That was that was a lesson in dope sequencing from my opponent. They had they I could have known all that stuff before I started making decisions, but instead I just didn't. Mana Crypt, Trop, Atraxis here. Let's go. Get him, Queen. I can brainstorm in response to the Atraxa trigger. Put back these two show and tells that I don't need. Alright, cool. Alright, yeah. Weird game, but eventually we did it. Sweet. Very weird game. I'm boarding out Null Rod, though. That was a, a fun little experiment. And we are against exactly the matchup that Oath savagely crushes. But I also wouldn't really want to see if I was some sort of delicate combo deck. Okay, Gitaxian Pro, Mental Mist Up, Blue. All these non-blue decks we're playing against. Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize. Sensei's top, too slow. I actually don't like Bolas to Citadel versus them. I could tutor for Sphinx or Portal. And I don't want my life total to be important. I don't want Thalia to be important. I don't want Vexing Bobble to be important. All of those affect Bolas to Citadel. Or some negation can come out. Null Rod comes out. That gives me these seven that I... Oh, no. Tabernacle shouldn't be in this pile. Neither should Null Rod. What is this pile I've made? What's wrong with me? Okay, here we go. Extra Oko, pivot monsters, some removal, conditional interaction that is bad against their deck is out. I don't hate Force of Vigor, but Vexing Bobble is just such a unit. I have a bunch of answers to Containment Priest and a bunch of pivots against it. Let's go. A removal spell, two ways to cash out a monster in hand. This is probably too slow. Gashon and Tell isn't totally free versus them either. And a mulligan. If they put in some messed up thing. Okay. This hand's great. Gonna keep it. And I think I bottomed the strip mine here. That lets me keep Force Blue card or turn one Oko or cut down and develop. Wasteland. Okay. Do I just shove Oko into play? Come on, blue card. Blue card. Bummer. 
All right. Mox Jet. Mox Sapphire. Cast Oko. Hope they don't have Mind Break Trap. Oko. Cool. We're in. I'm going to make a food token. And then pass the turn. I have to imagine they have a really good turn two. Or they just kept a handful of Containment Priests and stuff that answers Oath. And hopefully Oko just jukes them. Mox Emerald. Cut down misses a lot of the creatures in their deck. Try and cut down over something like uh, Long Goodbye. It's specifically for Lavinia and Containment Priest, but it doesn't line up very well against the creatures here, where I would rather have Long Goodbye. White Plume Adventures in. I can cut down the Spirit and then make them block with White Plume. I could cut down the Spirit, then steal White Plume. Or no, they're going to put one on Oko, so... That's not a good idea. I would lose Oko to steal that. That's not worth it. Oh, they are going face. Interesting. Decided face is the place. They get to untap the spirit here. And then Vampiric Tutor. A powerful spell. I'm going to cut down their spirit token and then make them block my food token. Elk of food. Coming for you. I don't play a basic in this build which means the first room of the dungeon doesn't matter. They could decide that they just want to play a creature game against me and let me have the initiative. But they're going for the trade instead. All right. Let's see what the follow-up is. They'll have to lost well here because Forge doesn't have a target. And they can Forge. It would just miss. If they think the trap and the archive are somewhere they'd rather be. We do find ourselves in a cursed double orchard no oath game, though where this vamp tutor would be so easy with a, just something else, but the fact that I'm actively trying to take the initiative from them is super awkward. Containment Priest resolves. Okay, now they can forge. That makes sense. All right, I can still elk that, but it will be a 5-5. Five five. I think my game plan here is vamp for oath, elk the priest. Or I could vamp for ancestral and just try to Big game it. Or Vamp for Tinker. Get the... Yeah, Vamp for Tinker. Get the the portal. It's probably where I actually want to be. Another creature. Okay. This puts them into the trap right away. Yeah, if they don't wasteland me, they're fucked. And if they do wasteland me, it's not great either. Okay, I'm going to Vamp for Tinker in the end step. Okay, they decided to wasteland me. So I don't get to take the initiative right away. But I will take it when I reanimate their creatures on the following turn. Okay, Tinker. Grab that. Oh shit, I have to give them another creature. God, I'm so bad at this. Why am I so bad at this? Alright, damn it. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Yeah, that was not good. Okay. Tinker. Still gonna get the portal. It's still pretty good here. I can elk whatever they don't sacrifice. And then I can try to take over. Yeah. Uh, elk, the containment priest. So my portal works next turn. And then I can take the initiative. They get to draw a card here. Yeah, I totally forgot that I have to give them two things to execute that. This is why we test. Okay, they draw an extra card. If they have another initiative creature they can cast, they go straight into the throne of the dead three. They can put Oko to three loyalty here. If they have another containment priest, they have me locked and I blew it. Mox Ruby. Witch Enchanter, damn it. All right, yep, that kills Portal to Frexia. What a good upgrade for this deck. I think it's kind of a weird decision in Modern Horizons 3. If you're designing that set and you're like, you know who needs help? Terrible Ancient Tomb Stompy decks. Wouldn't it be cool if they just had a little more to do? No, no, it's not cool. It sucks. Okay, uh, if I elk my Sapphire, they have to block or they lose the initiative. But then I just lose Oko on the following turn. This is only a 2-2. Yeah, there's the block. Okay, they got me. Uh, lost to my own mana base there. It was basically nothing the opponent did. I just had to give them too many spirits as I executed my, my plan. Now I just get to do the same thing, but I'm on the play. Is Thoughtseize worth considering on the play? Is Cutdown even good? It does kill Condemnment Priest, which is the important one. I don't like Cutdown here, 
I kind of wish it was long goodbye, at least for this matchup. But I do still think it is the correct way to build and play the deck. Let's go. I just had the thought of, was my Oko high enough to trade one of my Moxin beef on the turn that I cast Tinker? Like, if I trade for Season Dungeoneer or whatever creature was in play with power 3 or less, and then Portal kills the Kadama Priest, I don't need to elk it. Yeah, that might have been there. I feel like Oko was on 7 when it passed that turn, and it takes 5 to do that. Okay, I probably blew it. I was too busy losing my mind that I miscounted in the first place. Okay, this hand is bad. This is a functional turn 2 Atraxa, but I don't trust Mono White Initiative to not disrupt me at all. So I'm going to mulligan. This is a turn 1 Sarah's Emissary. I will keep this. And I think I'm going to bottom. Tropical Island. Okay, Trop, Lotus. This plays around Mindbreak Trap. Or no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. The next thing's not a spell. Show and tell. Emissary on creature. Hope it holds. All right, I have protection from creatures. You have the initiative. Only one can win. Do they have swords to plowshares in their hand or not? I think that's the card that matters here. Play out the Mox Jet, just in case they have a Bobble or Thalia or something. They tutor a planes, and I cross my fingers. They're going into Lost Well. Let me see a bottom bottom here. They bottom bottomed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Chrome Mox. Exiles Witch Enchanter. Mox Sapphire. Wasteland. Anointed Peacekeeper. They get to see the Forbidden Orchard in my hand. Force of Negation is the card they named. That's a weird card to name. It's not even in my deck. If they're worried about me countering, uh, I guess if they have Swords of Plowshares in their hand and I'm untapping into three mana, but that's not even live anyway because they have Wasteland. Okay, I'm going to take the initiative here. I don't have a basic in this build to search for. And they have one turn to take it back. If they do take it back, they're in great shape. If they miss, I'm in great shape. And they have a creature attacking that... Does not do damage because I have protection from creatures. I still have the initiative. If they could kill Emissary, they would have done it pre-combat. Kind of a Myria. Cannot block either because I have protection from creatures. They can untap one of their things. I could go Forge or Lost Well here. I think I want a Lost Well. My creature doesn't need to be bigger, but I might need to do something else this game. Something like Ancestral Recall. Put that right on the tippity top. Draw that. I will give them a creature and Ancestral myself. That's my spell for the turn. Play Tropical Island tapped. Attack them for half of their life total. And we are back to Swords to Plowshares or Bust. And I can play Oath if they deal with them. If they plow him, I go to 27. I take a giant hit. They get the initiative back. Then I play Oath. Okay, yeah. Just soloed by a giant creature. Functional turn, one win. On to the next round, still undefeated. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I am on the draw in round four with turn one Orchard Oath. I'm going to keep. This is kind of all in, but it's very powerful. Bazaar of Baghdad. Off seven cards. I hate my life. Looks like proper dredge is the opponent. Hollow one. Okay, now I don't need to play Forbidden Orchard. Oh, no. Well, that just ruins my life. My plan was good until now. I, on the play. I'm pretty gassed up, though. All right, Oath off the top. Show and tell off the top. Not quite the same as Oath off the top. I'm going to get all these cards out of my hand. I think they're safer in play. If I get Force of Vigor, you got me. Okay, so I want to draw an Atraxa or Bolas' Citadel, so show and tell is live. They did not dredge in their upkeep. Hit a Creeping Chill. Now we're dredging in the main phase. Okay. Legal. I take seven here. Both definitely too slow at this point. Or 
Not definitely too slow. Probably too slow. The track's off the top. Let's go. Bolus is Citadel. Vamp Tutor. You're going to be a turn too slow. Five, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this is exactly enough damage that I am dead. Okay. On the draw versus a uh, dredge deck who kept seven. Okay, that's fine. You're just not going to win those. Sarah's Emissary, Sphinx, Tabernacle all coming in. Emissary, Sphinx, Tabernacle. These other cards don't really matter or do anything. Null Rod is out. Thought Seize is out. I mean, Thought Seizing a Grief could actually be pretty dope, but I don't think that's what's actually going to happen here. Mental Misstep out. Bluster Storm has text. Probe is at least a redraw. Force of Negation. I don't love, but it's fine. This is what we got. Okay, let's go. I have a turn two Tinker with Force Backup. I will keep this. They powdered seven cards. That's two forces gone. And then they mold to one. Okay. For every seven they keep, they mold to one. The universe is in balance. Okay, I'm going to pass the turn. And we'll see if their one card even is bizarre. Did they fully whiff? Did we hit the, like, 0.1%? <laughs> the full Paris, or uh, the full London Mulligan down to one card without seeing a bizarre. And they powdered. <laughs> okay. All right. We've seen both ends of the bizarre spectrum there. Okay, I didn't like Thoughtseize on the play. I certainly don't like it on the draw. Of course, the negation doesn't counter grief, so that doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, this is the deck that I have play. Here we go. My hand does not work. I'm going to mulligan it here. Opponent's also on six so far. Mulligan. This hand can show and tell Oath into play. It could also Demonic Tutor for a land and then play Oath. That's probably actually the line. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep this and bottom Oko. Or bottom the second Oath. Yeah, I don't think I'll need two Oaths. Opponent has kept six. I will also keep six. Bottom the backup Oath. Here we go. A risky hand, but we're operating on crazy margins here as we play against Bazaar. Yep, there's the Bazaar. I will have to force a grief because I cannot win if they take this Black Lotus. Discarded another Bazaar Jesus. That's terrifying. These hollow ones are actually fighting with me, though. Because now I don't need to get Orchard. I can get a normal land. If I draw something worth showing, I'll just pivot onto that. And they have two cards left in hand, so Force Green card or Force Blue card are both covered by my Force Blue card. And they're going to have to have a gigantic turn. Oh, shit. Well, maybe I'll just do that. Black Lotus, show and tell, name creature. The discarding the Bazaar either tells me they have a third one, or they needed to keep a spell back for interaction here. Blue, 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 show and tell. I'm all in. Put in Sarah's Emissary. I named Creature. If they did have a third Bazaar. All right, yeah, named Creature. Okay, they put in nothing. Did they sandbag a Caracas, thinking this was a Traxa? I don't know. I, I am curious where the game's going from here. I mean, it could just be these are the cards they had because they're Bazaar and you have to keep your hand with Bazaar and you get what you get. And they might just be ice cold here. I don't know. Hoping for the best. Opponent said, probably not the best match for content. GG's. I disagree. This was great content because we just showed that Oath can do turn one fuck shit when your opponent is trying to do similar stuff. And having to grind out versus a deck that can do this when I could just, you know, here's this. You're dead. That is the strength of this deck. On to the trophy match. The Bosch and Roll channel is proudly partnered with the Resleevables. Hmm. Good. All right, here we go, gang. In this YouTube series, hosts Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan take us on a set-by-set -set journey through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Magic's history. Each episode is a focused deep dive into the facts about a set's design and release. The magic lore expressed through the cards in that set Tournament Edition gameplay videos featuring products and Pro Tour decks of the era. 
an award show that shouts out the best and weirdest cards of the set, and a final grade for the set's overall success. Whether you want a history lesson or a nostalgia hit, The Resleevables has it at youtube.com slash The Resleevables. I'm on the draw in the final round with a Oath, Oath Force of Will, and I will keep it. A Mox off the top would be great, but if this game is slow at all... Also, this lack of companion marks 15 consecutive vintage matches against zero Luris decks. Yeah, this is missed up, and then Force could pitch a track. So I have two pieces of interaction on my way up to Oath. Any Mox or Lotus Petal is a great rip, and we'll see what's up when we get there. Opponent has kept six cards. Mox Ruby. Mishra's Workshop. Ah, oh, Crucible of Worlds is such a test. I'm not going to counter it. If they sandbag strip mine, I'm going to need a Mox to play, but I kind of want to draw a Mox anyway. Yeah, I'm going to go Bayou Pass. I think I just care less about Bayou than I do about Underground Sea. All right, don't play Wasteland. Saga, we dodged. Okay. So now I just get to put Oath into play with Force back up and see what they can do about it in one turn. Drawing two attracts is kind of sucks because that does put me in the position where I might mill way more of my deck than I'm comfortable with and I can't get a third fire. But the first attracts, it should be enough versus shops. I would just really like to find my time walk off of Atraxa rather than mill it. Caracas. Fuck my life. Well, that makes everything a lot worse because now there's only one left in my deck. I am still going to fire here. But Seiju and Time Walk are both still in the deck. I did lose Tinker. Well, I can't take this last Atraxa. Demonic Tutor can get Baseju. Well, there's Time Walk. I have to take that. Mox Sapphire. Tropical Island. Is this how I want to do this? Okay. Uh, yep. These are the cards I'm taking. Draw for turn. Black Lotus. Hell of a draw. That lets Oko join the fray. Okay, Tropical Island. Mox Sapphire. Black Lotus. So this for blue, green, Oko. And I know the last Atraxa is in the bottom with six cards of my deck somewhere randomly. It's not exactly how I want to play Magic. I'm going to make a food and go into my time walk turn here. I'm pretty close to casting Atraxa. I'm not going to give them another spirit because I'm not going to Oath here anyway. Atraxa's back in my hand. There's Baseju. Okay. You're saying there's a chance. Now would I rather play towards hard casting Atraxa by removing the Caracas, or would I rather remove the Saga? I have to Elk the Crucible regardless. I think I'm going to Elk the Crucible. Let Oko take four, and then I can start Elking foods and stuff. That means I can't afford for them to make constructs. Does this list have two Besejus or one? There are two. Am I going to ignore Caracas completely? I think I have to for a while. All right, Besejus, the Saga. Are there any basics in your deck or basic land types? There are not. The full strip mine. Okay, now it's Oko versus four power. And I can fire Oath again, but I know Atrax is near the bottom of my deck. Until I shuffle, I'm not really inclined to do that. Load Stone Golem. Okay, Oko takes four, plus is two, four, blocks takes another four. I think I'm going to force this, pitching one of the many Atraxas. I don't think Misstep's going to do much here, but neither is the third Atraxa. Brainstorm is a phenomenal draw, if I can get there. This game would be pretty much over if I was playing Guy's Blessing, which is a card that mostly sucks. Oko is taking four. Okay, deck, give me some good vintage cards. I am declining this Oath Trigger. Show and tell. All right, that's a good one. I understand that Caracas is still in play, but I at least get to fire this Atraxa for another round. They put in another Saga. Atraxa gets to dig for a Shuffle Effect or the other Baseju or something useful here. Brainstorm is great. That puts Atraxa back. Backup Oko. Polluted Delta. Taxi and Probe is my only sorcery. 
do I even want Oath or do I want to leave that as a card in my deck? I think that's better as a card in my deck. Done. Blue to Delta. Oh, I should have kept the Oath because I literally just kept a Brainstorm. What am I doing? That was just a card. It's just straight up card. Okay, that was a little loose. Probe you. Mana Crypt. Not super interested in that. Brainstorm. Put back Mana Crypt and Atraxa. Then Mox Emerald. Sensei's Top. Elk My Food. Okay. And now I'm passing. Atraxa is on top of my deck. Oh, I could have waited till they bounce with this Caracas too and had even better Brainstorm. Yeah, this turn could have been played so much better than it was. Two Sagas tick up here. Yeah, so I think declining on the Oath, uh, on the Atraxa, if I don't take the Oath and then I wait for them to Caracas, then the Brainstorm gets to put both Atraxas back into the mix, and then I'm having a much better game. A big attack on Oko, I will trade off with Crucible of Worlds. Yeah, I think I'm just going to run out of stuff to do this game. Okay, upkeep, trigger Oath. I will mill zero extra cards. Atraxas right on top. And I actually... Do I want to fetch... I think I want to fetch before the Atraxa trigger because I would like to not see that Mana Crypt again. This is not a card I want. Saw it anyway. I guess I'm seeing half my deck. Okay, Mox Jet, Show and Tell, Force of Will, Verdant Cat or uh, Forbidden Orchard. I'm out of fetchables and I don't want Atraxa. Done. Draw for turn. There's one more Besaju in here. That's what I'm looking for. I guess I should Sensei's top first. I've seen most of my deck. Where is that Besaju? Okay, Ancestral Recall Demonic Tutor. We'll flip my top into Ancestral Recall. Mox Jet. Ancestral Me. Demonic Tutor gets the Besaju. My land for turn. Besaju the Caracas. They bounce Atraxa, who will be right back. They have seen the show and tell. Should I thought seize them? I do have the mana to do it. And I think this is the only way things can go awry. I will thought seize you. It's another saga. Okay. I'm a 13. Show and tell. Put in Atraxa. And I get to see basically in my whole deck right now. Two thirds of my deck. I probably don't want any of them. I actually think I want Flash and no other cards. Or I might as well take Box Pearl. Yeah, done. Leave the rest of those in there. Play out Mox Pearl. Elk the Mox Pearl as a blocker. And I have to go to discard. I'll dump the Forbidden Orchard. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, I have plenty of mana to cast Atraxa. I don't know why I got Flash. I guess it's a blue card for Force. And it can give me an Atraxa at instant speed, which may or may not matter. Let's see if I could beat these Constructs this turn. If they have something they could tutor that gets the constructs through the Atraxa, they're in great shape. This has been a delightful game. Three Sagas trigger here. I have to imagine they could like at least Pithing Needle Oko, if nothing more powerful than that. I don't know if this deck is going to have Manifold Key to make constructs unblockable. And they're still pumping them out. Yeah, here's the squad. They can make them at least... Or they're going to be seven, so I guess Atraxa just... Trades with one, if I can't do better than that. Tutored Soul Ring with the other one. If they could cast an artifact here, that's going to be really bad for me. Oh, Jesus. They drew one card and it's that, and they tutor Bobble, so I can't even interact with it. God damn. All right. Well, we were having a good game. It's still a good game, but that was a insane turn that just came together for them. I can Elk their Atraxa trade off with a Construct. I can flash in the other, my Atraxa, in combat, which they may or may not play around. I don't even know if that's good enough to win. They took Academy, Golos, and Chalice. Yeah, there's Golos, can't counter it. Do they play two Caracas? They got a Strip Mine, okay. Chalice on one, that stops my Sensei's top, but mostly it doesn't matter. These Constructs are now 10-10. It's probably time to ignore Oko and just kill me. Remember when I thought they could get up to seven artifacts this turn? And then I was like, I hope they don't have an artifact in their hand. And their artifact was Phyrexia and Metamorph. Horrible stuff. Let's see where their attacks go here. 
if it's just 20 to my face, I'll chump block with Mox Pearl and leave Atraxa in play. Oh, if the spirits get in, that makes things better. Okay, so if I block a spirit and a Mox Pearl, I go to 20 and then I take 11. Yeah, that's fine. I'm at 9. Then I can attack and go up to 16, and they're at 7. So I can elk their Atraxa. I cannot afford to trigger Oath here. No. Draw. Burden Catacombs. Elk the Atraxa. Attack with Atraxa. So they're at 7. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm 1 mana short. And I don't think Burden Catacombs has anything to fetch left here, because I milled 1 Trop and... There's six vegetables in the deck. Yeah, that makes me one short of playing Oko. What happens here? I block one of the... It's going to be an 11-11 next turn. Yeah, I think I've just lost. Okay. Uh, pretty sure I'm just dead here, but I will pass the turn and see if they make a mistake. I don't know what mistake could be made here. It's literally just turn your shit sideways and I'm dead. Okay, so let's debrief this game. It took all four Urza Sagas. It took Caracas out of the hand, didn't even tutor for it, just had it. It took me a turn longer than I would have hoped to find my second Beseju. I also made the decision early on to fight over Urza Saga rather than Caracas. Maybe if I just kill Caracas and go back on the Atraxa plan earlier, I have something better going on. None of these are attacking Oko. All right, uh, I, I am slain. Can't gain nearly enough life to stay out of that. All right. That whole game was brought to you by Caracas, which doesn't work post board anymore because I have a bunch of shit that's not a legend I can bring in. Abrupt Decay, Force of Vigor. Don't think I really want Portal to Phyrexia. Hey, things that are out Null Rod, Fluster Storm, Gataxian Pro, Mental Misstep. We've seen this before. Force of Negation is not the worst, but it's not really where I want to be either. We played against zero thoughts these matchups. This whole package has come out, I think, every single round. But this whole package is for the decks that are good against us. And we've played against decks that we would be happy to see in the wild. So I guess we're happy for that exchange, ultimately. I could cut Citadel. Uh, they have the Vexing Baubles and they pressure my life total and stuff. That means Tinker can get Sphinx. Do I want Portal? An Emergency Wrath of God. Is not the worst thing, and if they have like a Golos or Lowstone Golem in the graveyard, I can get it. I can also reanimate my Atraxas and stuff with this portal. It doesn't have to come from their graveyard. Yeah, I think I do want portal in. I just have to find a cut for it. I'm looking at Sensei's Divining Top. Without the Citadel, that card's a lot worse. And I'm not really trying to settle into a grindy game with this opponent. All right, here we go. I would like to play first. I would like to put an Oath of Druids into play. And I can Demonic Tutor also. Yeah, I'll keep this in. So it's going to be Lotus, Demonic Tutor for Force of Will, play Oath, give you a creature. Black Lotus, Black, 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 Demonic Tutor, Force of Will, Forbidden Orchard, Green, Oath. Okay, this is why you play Oath. Hands like this. Let's hope it holds. And I have seven hits in my deck now. Only four of them are Legends, if they do have the Caracas here. Soul Ring. They do have the Caracas. I have the Strip Mine. We'll see where this exchange ends up. Trigger Oath. Yes. I will name Artifact for Sarah's Emissary. Not a legend, famously. I don't know if Artifact or Creature is correct here, but their creatures are artifacts. So it seems like I'm just covering two bases. I don't know what artifacts they play that would target me, though. Okay, yeah, they're just dead. Okay, a turn one win. That's how we want to do that. Do I want my Force of Negations in on the draw? Force of Vigor is a perfectly reasonable hard cast if the game gets grindy. I think I'd rather have Vigors in. Okay, let's do it. Same deck. For the trophy, game three. Everything on the line. Oh, no. A totally fair hand that I would like in most matchups, but this is shops. If they just hard lock me, or if they just play a wasteland, this hand's really bad. Sphere of Resistance, this hand's really bad. This hand is good against Vexing Bobble, though. Show and tell for Portal or Atraxa. I think I'm going to keep this. 
The only thing I would want out of the hand that this one doesn't have is a force of will. And I'm down to four of those because I cut the negations. So I'm just mulling a hand that I'm mostly happy with, looking for a 40 percenter. And I don't care about Vexing Bauble. I don't care about Chalice on zero. I care a little bit about Chalice on one. I care a lot about that Wasteland. Crucible Wasteland. All right, well, we've worked through this a few times already. If I draw a Mox, we're just cooking. Force of Vigor. I like that card a lot. There are more Trops in my deck than Seas. I'm going to play the Tropical Island, and I'm going to Ancestral Recall in their upkeep. And if they take that opportunity to Wasteland me, I can kill the Crucible while they still think they have a land drop. Though I can respond to Wasteland with that too. Okay, uh, do I want to just hit the Pearl and the Jet? I kind of do want to take mana out from under them. Okay, I'm going to hit the Pearl and the Crucible, pitching an Oath of Druids to do it. I wish I could just hit the two mocks in, but that doesn't solve my Wasteland lock problem. That Ancestral also delivered zero mana of any kind. Oh god. Nettlesist. Alright, they chose to play Nettlesist rather than wasting me to hell. Time to slam this Oath. Hopefully that was the mistake that wins me this trophy. Oath of Druids. What's your last card in hand? I hope it's not a Graft Digger's Cage. No! Fuck my life into pieces. I mean, that makes sense given the the play that they made. Well, now I'm working my way back up to green black mana. I need this Besaju or this Abrupt Decay to kick in before this Nettle Sys deals 20. I target you. I will decline. Land. All right. Well, I'm going to play Besaju because I'm halfway to Abrupt Decay with this thing. They're in top deck mode. Patches of Hulahan doesn't change much. It adds to the clock, but it's not a lock piece. And that's what I'm worried about right now. Come on, fetch land. Black source, black lotus. Lots of good hits here. Land. Mox Ruby. It's not the one I wanted. I will play it out, though, while I can. Oh, this is going to be tight. Uh, now a blue source does it, too. Uh, any blue source cast show and tell. Any black source cast abrupt decay. Oh, fucking fuck. Thorn of Amethyst. That makes both their creatures bigger. Now I'm just dead. Yeah, I think that was the hard lock. Bummer. I mean, the way they played did indicate Graft Digger's Cage, but I didn't have another play to make instead. Like, I guess I could brainstorm and hope to find some kind of follow-up thing. Yeah, I think we're just dead here. I need to draw a Black Lotus. Yeah, Force of Will's not it. GG's. The trophy fended off by Aggro Shops. Okay, I mean, this league felt great. I had all of my flex slots pointed at jewel shops and like doomsday and our bad combo matchups and we played against zero of them still went 4-1 came down to a tight game in the finals of the, the last round i think i'm on oath for nyse like i think i just decided i understand that it's poorly positioned against the a deck one of the best decks that also just got a big juice from modern horizons 3 but it still smushes all this other stuff. Vexing Bauble, I was able to just play through throughout this entire league. Haven't seen a Luris deck in 15 matches. It's just insane. But I, I do like my Luris matchups for the most part. Yeah, this is probably going to be my deck. I might mess around with the flex slots a little bit. The cut down was kind of bad in a spot where I needed it to be good. Maybe I'll just split those. Like one cut down, one long goodbye. I did miss the basic island a few times this league. I'll probably put that back in. Just one of the tropical islands becomes basic island. But yeah, this felt like coming home, and it was the most winning I've done in my last several vintage leagues. Every game felt winnable. Even the games that didn't feel winnable, I ended up winning. I like that. Yeah, I'm going to fiddle with the last few slots, but I'm basically locking oath for this tournament. Everybody, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. And I will see you next time.